Welcome to the Workshop Podcast, hosted by Everthorne. Each week, we bring you interviews with industry leaders. As a leading Australian registered training organisation specialised in building and construction, we will be sharing our knowledge about trade and education. Whether you are interested in apprenticeship, recognition of prior learning, on-campus studies for international and domestic students, or online delivery, this podcast unpacks what you need to know to start or boost your trades career with insights, tips, and latest news from the government. Hello, workshoppers, and welcome to the first episode of The Workshop. Tools down, grab some smoko, sit on the eskies, and bring them a little bit closer. We have a cracking episode for you today. Known as Senior Smooth in Everthought Education, and that's just about floor tiles. We've got a wonderful <coughs> guest, and that is Sandro, our wall and floor tiling trainer all the way in Brisbane. Sandro, how are you? Good, thanks, James. Thanks for that. Wonderful introduction. I don't think anyone's done more uh, justice than that. Yes, no, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Sandro, want to step straight into it. How did you get into wall and floor tiling? Well, interesting enough, when I first started, when I left home, or I should say left school, I went straight into hospitality first. As so I was working in a bar, restaurant, cafes, those, those sorts of things, and then certain events. And then my dad said that I should probably go down the track of being a tradesman. For some reason, he thought that would be the best thing. So we had a family friend that was a tiler, and I had so much respect for him. And, and I think that's what kind of guided me towards being a tiler. And I think also because I'm, I'm quite creative, and I think that's, that gave me the opportunity to be creative. Awesome. Why floor tiling in particular? I mean, obviously you've got a wealth of trades out there. Why, what made floor tiling sing to you? I think a combination of, I didn't like heights. So the thought of being on a trestle painting kind of put me off. Didn't want to be a concreter because I thought of working outside. Carpentry was kind of going to be my second, third choice. But I think tiling because I just, I don't know, I felt like you're actually kind of creating something. You're creating a pattern. You're actually creating it and it's a finished product and like I said I think the OCD in me you know being very precise and very accurate really appealed to me because that's that's what tiling is all about being creative and and problem solving and seeing the finished finished product so walk me through your career a bit how did you end up at Everthought Education well I I had my business, I had my tiling contracting business. I was working at a job at Petrie Terrace and I had two staff. I had a gentleman by the name of Matthew and I had another guy with me working with me, which for the life of me, I can't remember his name right this moment. He was working for me and he'd been tiling for about four years but didn't have his qualification and he was he was looking to get his qualification. So he went down the road, he contacted Everthought to get his qualification and then the trainer assessor contacted me and was asking me about this student, my offsider, yep. who was looking for qualification and during that conversation he asked me if I had ever considered being a trainer, you know, would I be interested and I said well strangely enough, you know, I've done my cert, uh, cert three, cert four in training and assessment and yes that was my thought and that's how it kind of all started, a few days of conversations and then long behold I started working for Everthought. That's a very interesting routine, actually. I didn't know that. What are some things that you see from good students that is, I guess, a common trait for a wall and floor tiler that they can really kick on and do well? I think from what I can see over the years, what makes a great tiler is somebody that really has an attention to detail, has a really great eye, has that ability to really want to create something and that's creative or just understand about straight lines. So, so I don't know if there's a, if there's a trait. I, I do kind of jokingly think to myself, oh, yeah, to be a great tile, you need to be OCD or you need to be really pedantic about yeah. finishes and things like that. But in terms of the personality, mate, the personalities range. I mean, I know I've got guys that are really great. I've got mates that are great tilers that are, 
kickboxing champions and things like that, you know, where they're just like big bulking guys with tattoos and yet they're fantastic tylers. So I think I think there's a there's a there's a creativity in them and there's an expression, you know, expressing their 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 ability to create something beautiful. And I think that seems to be potentially a common commonality between them all is that they have this willingness to really try and create something beautiful. Okay. And what, I guess, from when you see students first start, what are some, I guess, some things where you've seen, like, differentiates, I guess, your top 5% of students from anybody else in that classroom? I think the first thing is the ones that have a willingness to learn demonstrate to me that potentially they will go into great things. But it's always hard to tell from the first couple of weeks or first couple of months who's going to continue on to be a Tyler. Because I feel like when they start off, they're still, these students are still, they're trying to find themselves. And so therefore it's like this, this internal battle of is tiling for me? Is it tiling not for me? Am I going to be a great Tyler? I'm unsure. I'm unsure. So there certainly be, seems to be a period of time when they first start. There's that lot of that soul searching or is this the right choice? Well, that's an interesting On top point. of that, just, I'm yeah. just gonna, I just want to explore that a little bit further. What are some things then, I guess, you as a, a floor tiling instructor or teacher, what, how do you ease them through that process? I ease them through that process because what I say to them is that you, you'll get it sooner or later, you'll get it. And so certain things come really easy for other people and other things come easy and, and come hard for other. And it, for me, it's about them not being too hard on themselves about whether they're failing because we all fail at things and eventually we succeed. So for me, it's the process of getting them to understand that it's it's that 1% better every day. I just need them to get 1% better every day, not 5%, not 10%. It's I just want them to do a little bit better 1% every day or try 1% more or communicate 1% better every day. Or So it's always about the 1% because we know that lots of 1% make 100%. And, and so that, it's all the small, it's the gradual small steps moving forward. And is that because obviously you get to work with them over a greater period of time over the two year, over the two year period for an international student or a three year domestic apprenticeship and you've got the time to really sort of mentor those students? Yes, most definitely. I get to, I get to build relationships with them that I can find out what actually makes them tick a little bit and why they're doing it and what's their background because they've all come from different cultures and different backgrounds. And not everybody comes into my classroom and says, you know, if, cause if I ask them the question, why do you want to be a Tyler? Probably a lot of them just don't know yet because they haven't tried it. So they're not quite sure. sure, but I can see the twinkle in their eyes when things start to fall into place or if they're studying and they do find a job as a tiling, you know, assistant, then I can see the excitement in them. I can see them excelling. I can see the enthusiasm builds up because it's like a big puzzle that's all starting to fit. And so it's a timing thing. You know, it's like it's the, the more time I spend with them, the mentoring, the conversations, you know, you know, encouraging them to get better, you know, when they've done something wrong, it's like, okay, so is there another way we could have done that? What do you think you did right? What do you, did, do you, did you think you did wrong? So I'm always trying to get them to also do that self-evaluation of their performance, not too critical, but it's kind of like, okay, you tiled that wall. What do you think you did good? I think I did my joints really well. Right. What do you think you did bad? I didn't pull all the crosses out properly. Okay, great. What do you think, you know, what, what have you learned from this, from this experience? So this, 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 and this, you know, so, so it's not just me always giving them feedback. It's like, here's my feedback. What do you think you did? So they're also reviewing what they're doing as well. So you're not just teaching wall and floor tiling then. You're also teaching real life world skills that are applicable in the job space, like accepting feedback in either a positive manner or a constructive manner. All the time, all the time. I mean, we, 80% of the time we're talking about tiling, 20% of the time we're talking about lots of life stuff because a lot of these students are coming from, from you know, another country. They don't have family here. Yet some of them will open up to me and tell me their backgrounds and some of them won't. Some of them I only find out on the last day that they've had a girlfriend, a long-distance relationship, and they're having a, a long-distance relationship with a partner who's in Canada. That's you know, So 
it, it's you're, you're always finding something about them every single day, and it's just getting them to feel comfortable in this environment. I, I make it quite clear from I make it clear to them from the start that you know almost I am their trainer, and my my goal is to train them to be the best Tyler that they possibly can. We're going to have good days. We're going to have bad days. We're going to be days where potentially we're cross at each other, we're cranky at each other. But I have a job to do. My job is to try and get them trained. And if we can have a really good relationship along the way where it's a lot of mutual respect and just lots of banter and chatting, great. If we don't, then it is what it is. But, but you know, they I do get a lot of them, even after they've finished, still keep in contact with me. You know, I've had a couple of the students move down to Melbourne, you know, they're now still tiling. And, and, and so that's the other thing too. Everything I do is, is to make sure that they can be the best they can, whether it's tiling, but also just in, in, in just general lifestyle. You know, I have very uh, conversations broad, lots of broad conversations, marriage, you know, relationships, dating, everything. I don't always bring it up. They tend to bring it up and I jump on the bandwagon and have a, a bit of a banter and a bit of a chat with them. I kind of see you, Sandra, as almost like a gatekeeper to the wall and floor tiling industry. What are some things that you do to make them world ready? Good question. I don't know if I call myself the gatekeeper. I feel like I'm like the the, the strong foundation for them to actually build up their their skills and their knowledge and their confidence. So for me, it's, it's obviously trying to prepare them for it. It's also trying to build up a little bit of self confidence in them. It's also giving them the tools and the ammunition to go, listen, you know, nothing's gained by not communication. You know, so if you're not communicating with your boss, like you, you're telling me, you know, sometimes I'll get a student go, oh, Sandra, I want to get paid more money. Why do you want to get paid more money? Oh, because I believe I, I, I should get paid more money. Well, then you need to go and have this conversation with your boss. Hey, boss, I feel like I need to get paid more money. And you need to explain to him the reasons why. But you also need to give him the opportunity to to respond to that and see how you can come to a common ground. So I try and give him the tools about how communication is very important, whether it's in life, whether it's in work, and that 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 you know effective communication can benefit you know to them in, in multiples of ways. So uh, yeah, so I do try and give him as much as I can. What do you do? to, you know, you've got some students that you see struggling what, and, you know, one way, shape or form. What are some ways that you try and pull them back on track? Um, I guess what I try and do is what, when I've got them in, a, in the right state of mind, so like if they're in the middle of a project and, they're, <clears throat> and uh, you know, they're just plodding along, I'll just like, hey, how's it going? I'll try and engage with them and I'll just, you know, as we're talking, hey, how's life? How's things? You know, and just try and find out what's happening in their life and then bring it back to a, Hey, I noticed recently, you know, you haven't been yourself. Um, you know, I've noticed your performance levels has, has dropped. I noticed your attendance has dropped. Is there is there is there something going on? Is there something I need to know? Is there something that I may be able to help? So I try and ask questions. I try and look for the signals. Body language is a, is, a, is a big giveaway, and obviously attendance and progression. They're the three things that I find are the big giveaways. But I just try and give them. I communicate with them in a way that letting them know, to let them know that I'm here for them if they need to. And and then also on top of that offer that if they don't want to talk to me, then maybe there could be somebody in the office they may want to talk to. So, yeah, it's just trying to get engaged with them and give them the opportunity to come and talk to me if they wish to do so. No, that's amazing, Sandro. So I, you, you're providing a real structure there in the classroom, not just in it by the sounds of things, but also out of it. In regards to, I guess, the product and the material that you're using with the students, how would you say that differs differs in terms of what you're using in the industry? Well, all the products I'm using at the moment are all, are all industry currency. So I'm using real real adhesives. I buy them from a company called Baseset. They offer lots of support. I'll trial different materials just to see how they go from a training perspective. But everything we use is is current. It's what tilers would use on a day to day basis, and, and I'll mix it up from time to time so the students get to trial the different materials, and we'll talk about the different processes. 
you know, just the same with cutting, how we cut differently. So it's really important for me and for them to understand it because not every employee is going to use the same product. Uh, so the more that they can work with, the better they'll be. So you try and use a wide variety of products in, that the industry currently uses in the classroom so that they are industry ready by the time they've finished with you? Yes, most definitely, most definitely. Like, you know, I work with basic materials. I work with Marpai, sometimes Dunlop, sometimes Dabco. You know, and then I'm talking to the tile shops as well to find out what's happening in the industry, you know, whether it's stone and marble. And then sometimes it's uh, it's uh, the new processes, whether it's the pedestal systems and or the tile leveling clips. So I try and make sure that we're keeping up with currency because there's no point me, you know, talking about something. You know, I can talk about something I did five years ago, but I'll relate it. And if I'm talking about it, I'll go, by the way, we still you do the same thing. What we did five years ago in this situation, I would still do the same. But the other way I, I get to bring other value add to my students is, is going into Instagram and, and looking at Facebook and I, on social media and I'm showing them what other titles are currently doing. What's the trend at the moment? So we'll have conversations about that. Uh, and then we'll discuss, oh, this is potentially how they're installing it. This is what they're probably doing here and so forth. I'll also go to trade events and trade dates and workshops just to make sure I keep up with currency so that way I can, I can pass it on to my students. That's actually really interesting. So, I, I mean, social media has changed so much in the last two, three years, let alone in the last 10, 20 years. Yep. How, how are you using that in the classroom? I know you just sort of gently walked through, but I was just a little bit more detail in around that. Well, conversation could be like, so say for an example, if a student says to me, oh, Sandra, I'm trying to look for work. And I'll go straight into, okay, so are you on any social media? And they'll go, yeah. I'll go, are you on Facebook? Yes, I am. Okay, great. Fantastic. On Facebook, there's, there's a couple of sites, like things like Carpentry in Brisbane or Brisbane Carpenters. And so on those sites, there'll be, they're just all carpenters who've joined up. And I tell the students, you can join up because even though you're not a fully fledged carpenter, you're actually learning. So you can, as part of your, the registration, you can put down that you're studying carpentry. So you are doing, you know, certificate three in carpentry. And so that enables them to get on there and see, you know, the materials that they're using, the tiling, whether it's tiling or carpentry, they'll see people talking about materials. But also, um, a lot of those sites are actually posting work opportunities. You know, it could be carpenters saying, hey, I'm building a house, I need a couple of tradesmen or I need a couple of laborers. So I will have those sorts of conversations. On Instagram, there's some really good hashtag tiling sites that I'll get in, get, get on and I'll show the students about what other industries or other, you know, tilers around the world, whether it's Australia, New Zealand, America, and how they might, they may do a process that's slightly different, how they may cut in a floor, the different patterns are different this. And so that just gives them broader knowledge than just a very, you know, having the blinkers on about how you can do things. Because there's lots of ways of doing things, incorporating Australian standards and everything else, but there could be lots of different ways that potentially we're not we're not thinking about. So that's how I will use social media, just to give to to give the students more content and more context as well. It's quite a blended learning style then in your classroom. So you're going from the practical to the theory and then a good online component as well. Oh, yeah, most definitely, most definitely. But I'll also, what I'll also do is I'll, I'll bring in experiences and stories. Stories are great. You know, I'll always talk about the different, the different jobs and sometimes I don't remember the client's faces or the names, but I remember the jobs. And I'll, I'll talk about how, you know, people will do things that it may not be to, the, to what we like, but we're, we're there to do a job and that is to give them a quality product. And so I'll talk about the different people and the different customers and their expectations and those stories are just to help to help the students to understand that, you know, it's not what we, you know, we, our job, we're the professionals. We're installing the product professionally. Clients may have a different perspective on colors and patterns that we may not agree on times. So, yeah, I'm bringing in lots of conversations about lots of things because, you know, the students need to understand that, that you know, just because somebody has a different way or different colour that may not suit or may not, we might think, oh, that's a completely hideous colour. It's not about that. We're giving them what they want. They want this 
They're going to love this and we're going to give it to them. So, yeah, I have lots of conversation uh, and bring lots of elements to the learning, to that holistic learning. When you, know, you are on job and you're, you know, you're installing someone's bathroom, tiling on the floor, those sorts of things, you're, you're making a big fashion statement for the client as well. How do you guys teach anything in and around those design choices where people, where you can just see someone's making a horrible decision and you, you're, you're going to try and guide them elsewhere? <laughs> Oh, yeah, look, look, most definitely, all the time, all the time. I mean, when I go, when I used to go in and see clients and I'd have a conversation with them, they'd say, we want to do this, we want to do that, we want to do this. And i go, great, okay, why do you want to do this? And they'd probably give paint this picture of, oh, well, you know, the, the architect said we should do this and do that. Okay, but what do you think you want to do? And so uh, my job is to go in and, and find out why they want to do certain things, have the conversation with them, give them the pros and cons of each thing. I'll give you two examples. Number one, I had a lady by the name of, oh, geez, I can't remember her name now. The lovely lady. Sheila was her name. She was South African. She lived in, she lived in Kenmore Fig Tree Pocket. <clears throat> and she wanted a multicolored wall in her bathroom. Oh, wow. We were laying 100 by 100 mils, yeah. 100 by 100 mil tiles. And she said, Sandra, I want, I want this, I want random color on this wall. And I said to her, okay, well, my interpretation of random could be completely different. So how about this? How about I give you some grid paper and you color in the squares that represent the tiles in the colors that you want in the position and I'll follow that to the T because then that is giving you what you want. And, and she said to me, she goes, oh, you know, you know, my husband kind of thinks, you know, I'm just going mental about this and blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, look, I said, Sheila, I always look at this way here. When people are doing making their choices about designs and colors for their bathroom, it's a permanent permanent fixture. It's not something like it's a, a side cabinet that you can just remove and get a new one. It's 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 fixed and it requires a lot of money to replace. So there's two ways of looking at it. Are you doing this renovation to sell the property or are you doing this renovation because you're going to be here forever? And she said to me, Oh, they're going to have to take me out of the box. I'm here forever. I said, well, then when you are building something, renovating something, you want to love it. You want to be able to walk into the place and go, I love it. And it's the same with tiling. When you tile a bathroom and creating a bathroom, you want to be able to walk into it and go, I really love this bathroom. It's everything I wanted. And that's what she did. Another story, I had a client, uh, another client, Leanne, and I was actually just telling the story to the, to the students the other day. The builder said to me, oh, Leanne wants to have a quick chat with you, Leanne, being the client. Leanne wants to chat to you, chat to you about some tile selection. I said, yeah, no problem. And she came up to me with a, a black mat, uh, six, uh, 400 by 800 tile for the floor, 300 by 600 tile for the floor, you know, porcelain tile. And she said, Sandra, I, I really like this tile. You know, I like it because I like black, black. I like black. And I said, yeah, okay. And she said, but I'm worried about cleaning. And I said, yeah, I am too. She goes, oh, but I would have thought it would hide the dirt. I said, yeah, it hides the dirt, but it doesn't hide the dust. So my biggest fear, if I was to lay this, you're going to walk from the outside inside and the footprints that you've, you've picked up the dust and your footprints and you're walking through the house and you'll collect the dust. And so you'll see dust. You'll see the dust. And she's like, mm, yeah, but is there going to be a lot of dust? And I said, well, I can't answer that question. It depends on whether you have a mat outside the door and this and that. And so our conversation continued on. She decided she wanted to do it, so we did it. No word of a lie, for 10 years after I did that job, every time I'd see the builder, work with the builder, and I'd bring up that conversation. Hey, how's Leanne and Doug going at Kenmore? Yep, still love the tile, Sandro, but hates the dust. Oh, dear. Hates the dust. So, yeah, you, you do go through those periods of, you know, when you're dealing with your clients and you're giving them as much information for them to make their choices, and some of them will make choices that that you know aren't great. But that's the thing, you know, you can't tell people all the time what to do. You can offer them suggestions, and sometimes they just once they've got their head made, you know, their, their mind made up, they just make it. And sometimes they're the wrong choices. Amazing. Yeah. So what what I'm hearing from yourself, Sandra, is you've got a lot of experience in the industry. You care deeply about your students both professionally and also from a very personal perspective. And not only that, you, you, 
actively go out into industry to make sure that what you're teaching is the highest class in world-class facilities using quite literally the best products you can get your hands on. How does the industry support you? Oh, look, I think I still speak to a lot of different tilers and I, and I actually, by the public, I still get lots of calls from people. I had a call um, just late last year from a lady that I told her her foyer area like 10 years ago and I couldn't remember her name, couldn't remember anything about her, but when she told me, when she told me what it was, then I knew straight away. So, I, so from that perspective, from the public, I still get lots of support there. From the from the building side of it, you know, I try and keep in contact with them as much as I can. They'll give us lots of support. You know, base that were great. They've been great over the last four or five years. They gave us a bunch of shirts. They've helped to facilitate training for the students by offering support by you know workshops. And, you know, large format tiling training. That, you know, I had about 15 students go over there. So, yeah, we've had some really good support by by different companies. Johnson's have been really very supportive and they continue to do so. So, yeah, we, we do get pretty good support from industry, most definitely. One last thing, though, Sandro. If someone was considering your wall and floor tiling set three, what would you say to them? I would say to them that it'll be a great ride. It'll be a great experience. You'll learn a lot. And potentially you'll get a great year, a great career in tiling. You know, I've seen I've seen a number of my students who have gone into great things. I've got currently I've got three students working for aesthetic tiling down the Gold Coast, and they are now running their own jobs for or running some of the jobs for aesthetic tiling. So I think you know if somebody's out there thinking about it, there is really a lot of opportunities out there to to work for companies and also to to go on further and have your own and and have your own business. So I would say, come, let me train you, let me guide you, let me mentor you, and let me, you know, enable you enable yourself to be the best child as you can, so that you can have a great career. I love it. He's senior smooth in the classroom, smooth on his tiles, and he's super smooth <laughs> on the pod workshop. Sandro, thank you so much for your time. I greatly appreciate it. And this is episode one of our Ever Thought Trainer Showcase. And we're looking forward to showing you the other disciplines as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Workshop Podcast. We hope you enjoyed this episode and we will see you again next week. The podcast is hosted by Everthought Education, RTO 32438, Everthought College of Construction, RTO 51681, Krikos 02898C.